Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and um, thank you for allowing me to kind of skip the line, and I'm sorry that I won't be able to be part of the, uh, the, the second half of this briefing, but I do appreciate the opportunity to have you before the committee here, uh, General Scaparotti, and just thank you for your leadership. Uh, you've mentioned the high north, and uh, that is an area that I pay, uh, of course, particular attention and, and concern to. You mentioned uh, Russia positioning itself to gain strategic advantage, uh, not only uh, uh, with the with the sea lanes as they are becoming open, but we're seeing stepped up a activity. Um, I think it's fair to say that that all Alaskans are, are paying particularly close attention to Russia. It was just a few weeks ago that uh, for four days in a row, we were um, greeted with uh, aircraft that were spotted off the coast uh, of Alaska and uh, well, that used to be a common sight. We haven't really seen that since since 2015. So people look up, they wonder what the scramble's all about, and they really wonder what is going on. Uh, a senior defense official was quoted as saying that this was, quote, not a concern and up, attributed the uptick to a recent lack of available Russian aircraft and the need to boost training. So I want to ask you about that, whether you agree with that assessment, but also want to have you speak to uh, the specifics that we are seeing in in Russia and this Arctic expansion. Um, it was highlighted in the news this weekend. I don't know if you saw the Sunday night, uh, the NBC nightly news report on the 80th Independent Motor Rifle Brigade. This is a Russian Arctic brigade that's now stationed along the Finnish border. And as chairman and, and ranking member, it might be, it's a, it's a two minute clip, but it is, it's Pretty, uh, pretty substantive in terms of showing what the Russians are doing in their Arctic training uh, and, and recognizing that they're training in temperatures that are tough. It's 40 degrees below zero. They are using everything from tanks to military hardware, snow machines, uh, even reindeer and dog sleds. Um, but it, it's, it's not just the training that's going on, it's what is happening with the opening of some pretty impressive new bases, not just dusting off the Cold War era Arctic bases. They recently unveiled a 14,000 square foot Arctic Shamrock, which is a permanent Arctic base along the 80th parallel, as well as, as having four new bases planned. So folks in Alaska are wondering what's going on. Uh, they hear senior uh, defense uh, officials say, you know, don't be too worried here. How how do you um, how how do you offer the assurance to to Alaskans, I guess, or to all Americans uh, about what we're seeing in in Russia right now? What does this year's ERI do to to basically keep Russia on its side of the border? So, if you can speak to the activities in the high north, I'd greatly appreciate it. Senator, thank you. I think you accurately described uh, what we see. Um, Russia, as it has invested uh, in its forces uh, over the last five to six years, um, is doing so in a very broad manner, um, and so it affects their, you know, their air, maritime, ground forces, um, their coastal defense forces, their radar systems for air defense, et cetera. So we see it across the board, and we've now seen them begin to make those improvements in the high north or in the Arctic as well. As you noted, the Northern Sea Route, one of the routes there is, uh, given the warming, is the most likely. It's the one that is open first, et cetera, and it does travel closest to their border. Uh, as they put in, the, in bases, they're refurbishing old ones, they're putting in some new ones. Uh, they're placing forces, as you noted. Uh, they're placing some um, air defense and uh, missile systems in as well. Um, our concern is is that uh, rather than the Arctic being a place that is for uh, commerce, uh, stable, uh, freedom of uh, maneuver in accordance with international laws is uh, adhered to, that, that they could position themselves in a place to control uh, the Arctic and that sea lane. And so that's what we're watching very closely. I would tell you that the flights are a function in a sense of their growing um, capabilities, the refurbishment of the Air Force, their long-range bombers that you referred to. But they're also starting to demonstrate those capabilities. That's, that's 
what they're doing. They're demonstrating their capabilities. They do so on the other side of the Arctic into Europe as well. Um, ERI is the very basis of our response to Russian aggression, uh, malign influence, and also their modernization. The, um, the ERI funds uh, provide us the capability, for instance, um, in w early warning systems. It provides us capabilities in, um, in ISR, intelligence surveillance and reconnaissance, uh, specifically with respect to uh, anti-submarine warfare, which is a very important component of their high north. Their northern fleet um, is in that area in the Arctic. Uh, and so all of those things go into that. When we go into the classified session, I can go into a good deal more detail about what they're doing and, that, and how we can influence that. But as you said, I remain concerned, and it's a point that I bring out because of uh, our need to continue um, what we're doing at ERI, but broader than that, we also need to continue our modernization so that we remain dominant in the domains that, uh, that provide all of our citizens and Europeans reassurance that we can deter this threat and protect the United States. Well, I appreciate that, and I, I will look forward to an opportunity to, to perhaps visit uh, more directly with you about some of these specifics. I, I am going to be uh, uh, taking a group of of members uh, at the end of this month uh, to uh, Norway, where we'll have an opportunity to visit the Marines at the Joint Arctic Training there at uh, Varnes. And I know that we have we have various partnerships in other places with other Arctic nations like, like Canada for things like search and rescue. But do we have any other military partnerships or opportunities um, like this? And do you see us doing more of, of what we're seeing right now with the Marines in, uh, in, in Norway and kind of building that, building that capacity out? Uh, we have a good partnership, obviously, with Norway. We've begun to work in a, in a uh, more routine basis. Uh, particularly with our Marines now, but also with other services, uh, air and naval, as well as Sweden and Finland um, in the north. And, uh, and we will continue uh, those operations with them, the training, uh, the, and to practice interoperability, et cetera. Uh, they have a very good understanding of Russia's posture because of their position and their long relationship with them. And that's very helpful to us as well in understanding deterrence, understanding a proper posture, and being able to get that right. Sir, I appreciate it, and I, again, I look forward to talking with you about these and, and other aspects. Thank you.